so my sweet girl bear there is not feeling too hot. I think she might have an ear infection, so we're going to take her to the vet today. So I'm headed out to get some kale to put in her carrier. So she has something yummy to munch on on the trip. Go ahead and grab my cheeky girl some too. And I'm gonna get Bear a couple carrots as well. She likes the greens mostly, so it doesn't really matter if there's much carrot. these off. Get the chickies a couple too. They're starting to get some size to some of them. Hey girls, waiting on a snack. Give you a couple carrots. There you go ladies. A little snacky snack. Okay guys, so she definitely had some ear infections and we've got her medicine and we're hoping and praying that it's just an outer ear infection because if it's an inner ear infection, that's really bad for rabbits. So say a little prayer for my Ellie bear if you think about it. She turned nine years old in February. So she is quite the old rabbit. And this is the first time she's ever been sick. So I think that's pretty good, Bear. It's pretty good. Tearing up your phone book, huh? She's got an oral antibiotic and also a topical antibiotic slash fungal that we have to squirt in each ear. Hope it does that trick. Hope it does the trick, huh? Yeah, because we love our bear. We don't want her to feel bad. All right, guys. So now that she's got her medicine in her, it is time to get back outside and do some yard work. So one of my sweet neighbors gifted me some untreated wood boards that he no longer needed. And to make use of them, my husband built me a new garden bed. And so I was just showing you there that we used some heavy duty landscape fabric around the inside edge of it to help it to last longer. And now I'm just filling it with a combination of garden soil and mushroom soil. So in our above ground pool, we have steps that we weigh down with these tight buckets full of sand. A few of them needed replaced this year, so I decided to repurpose them into containers for garden plants. So here I'm just drilling several holes in the bottom for drainage. And then I'll fill them with garden soil and mushroom soil and then decide what I'm going to plant in them. All right, guys, so as you can see, the piles of 
pokeweed everywhere. I cleaned up the front area. This, this was so overgrown with it. I just neglected it because I've been working in the back garden so much. But I'm finally gonna get the rest of the cold started flowers that I started in January. So those lupine, Canterbury bells, a bunch of other stuff. This right here is a volunteer something or other. I didn't plant that as well as there's one down here in the rocks. I guess the birds carried seeds right there, but they're really pretty. And I'm going to transplant both of them somewhere. I'm thinking I'm gonna take that one and put that one over in that corner. And this bigger one, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll put this bigger one in that corner. But I've gotta get this all cleaned up. And I have more cold started stuff. There's one there, there's one there. And then my rose bush is so pretty. And then I've got three over here that I'm going to plant. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split each container into three different plants and just plant like a little triangular area with each of them. Oh, and I forgot, I, I never showed you this. This is a pear tree that I got from Stark Brothers. It is Moon Glow Pear. And it's a pear tree that will only get about 10 feet tall. And then I planted some Rudbeckia around the base of it right there. Okay, so let's get to work. So, I was blessed yesterday by my neighbor. He was cleaning out his mother-in-law's house and found all these jars. Some had food in them and some did not. And then look at this really cool picture. So today's project is trying to clean this all up. And I'm going to, so these are from 2018, 2017. I think I opened one that was like 2008 at one point. Yeah, like this one's 2008 grape jelly. Um, I'm gonna actually put all this in my compost pile and clean out the jars. Our neighborhood had a community yard sale and I found this really cool roaster and it's got separators in it as well for $10. So that's cool. I mean, I killed it at the yard sales. We've got so much stuff. Got Christmas lights, Halloween decorations, cats smelling all the smells on everything. I got this cool like bunny basket. I'm gonna put some eggs in it. All kinds of stuff. Toolbox thing. And then I got these Bath and Body Works candles. Oh, they smell so good. I gotta show you this, guys. So my daughter made me this. She crocheted it. I don't carry around a purse. It's a chicken wallet. My daughter crocheted this for me. If you look inside, it's lined and it's got like little compartments. Is that not just, and then, and then it's got a zipper and everything. She made this. She is so talented. She has an Etsy store. Um, I believe it's called Cordially Crafted, but she, um, I've already gotten several, several compliments on it. And then someone um, commissioned her to do a turtle. <laughs> so show you that whenever she gets that done but she's so sweet to me love you jade all right so i ordered these what were they called exactly i guess they're in nesting box liners it came in a pack of 12 and this is what they look like they have like a paper backing that's supposed to keep the moisture and dirt from you know sitting on top of your wood so i'm gonna put each i'm gonna put one of these in each of the nesting boxes they're very messy what is it called they're aspen natural aspen natural aspen shaving nesting liners and they're size 13 by 13. i thought it said 12. okay So he 
you put uh, some roofing material on there and, and this actually pulls down and we've got three nesting boxes. Let's see if we can make these fit. So I guess I'm just going to set them right on top of the shavings. slide in and out to clean. That's okay. Oops. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> and we'll see how these work. Have a lot of good reviews. And apparently like if they get like some dirt on them you just take them out and shake them and, and stick them back in there lock it back up so they're not laying yet okay then I need to put some diatomaceous earth on my squash plants let's go grab that bag So I'm going to put the shade cloth on the greenhouse today. This big bag, diatomaceous earth. Basically, it is a mechanical insect killer. So basically, it's very, if you look at it underneath the microscope, it's very, it looks like a powder, but under a microscope, it's very, very sharp. And when the um small little critters crawl across it it cuts up their outer skeleton and it, then they die Once it rains, it's going to wash it away. Oh, and I also needed to put some of this in the nesting boxes as well, they said. It keeps critters from being in there as well. I forgot. Just flick a little bit on there. Just, I'm just going to kind of stick my hand in and then flick. Just make sure I kind of get each leaf. this does the trick because man I have such an issue with and I'm going to also sprinkle it around here an issue with my squash getting destroyed before I ever get anything from them especially like the winter squash Squash down here. Ooh, look at them made plants. Cherry is looking a little better. Put a little bit on it, I'm not sure. Oh, 
pumpkins. Okay. Yeah. More So we're just weaving the rope through the grommets and then we have some eye hooks down at the bottom holding the other rope and we're just weaving it through them up and down, up and down, all the way across. There's my chocolate mint. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like gum. Like chocolate mint gum. So yummy. All right, so we don't have any more rope, but if you wanted to pull the back and the front tighter, it has the same kind of, what are they, grommets? Is that what they're yeah. called? Grommets that go on the other sides um, for you to add rope like we're doing here and pull because it is, it's very stretchy. It's got a lot of stretch to it. But we're out of rope, so that'll be another day we'll do that.